the restaurant industry where we're seeing that in South Africa currently the restaurant industry predominantly most of the people that are hired there are people that are either documented or not documented non-South Africans and a lot of the South Africans where do you get that statistic what's your source well, the last time even, I've had the, no, Department no, of Home, the Department of Home Affairs was here. I've had callers who have been listeners who work within the industry who said, Faith, unfortunately, I work within Your the industry. Your people work in the industry. Let me, let me tell you. people that work in the industry. Who so the labor, the the labor department time. would have been your go-to area. So what's interesting about South Africa is that um, majority of industries, they've got less than 10 dominating Hmm. companies, whether it's mining, whether it's uh, security, whether it's um, uh, the tender, I mean the, 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 the restaurant and so on, hospitality. And when you think about the, the restaurants, let's go to the big restaurants. Hmm. Now, what are the big restaurants? KFC, Nando's. That's where the huge employees are. They account for more than 85% of the labor that is working in that space. The foreign nationals are hired in boutique restaurants. Those one restaurant in Sentin that sells food very expensively. But even if you go there, there'll be like 30% of the staff. We've had this exercise. We went. The president of the EFF went, spoke to those people. Most of the time he came across, and all of them would be boutique hotels. It's very difficult for KFC, Nando's, uh, Steers, Debonairs, and so on and so forth. In those restaurants, it's almost 100% South Africans. Where do you find these foreign nationals and not majority? It's difficult for them to work in that space because the restaurants are heavily regulated without being documented. Um, it, it's boutique hotels and they, they account for a very little labor force. Let me go directly to the problem people have with the EFF. Is People going around thinking, when we take over power tomorrow, we're going to open the borders. And say, everybody um, come to South and Africa. And say, from Egypt, from Cape to Cairo, come to South Africa. That's not true. That is a fundamental misrepresentation of an important macroeconomic question. So regional, r regional integration. You will never be able to build an economy if you are not concerned about your neighbors. Uh, Dr. Ndlozi, just to touch on those issues and what is important for the EFF as people consider whether or not to trust you with their vote. Well, I'm, I'm completely flabbergasted by the hypocrisy of Herman Mashaba. Herman Mashaba spends 100% of his time convincing us of less than 2% of South Africa's economy. Less than 2%. We must take this puzzle shops. Why don't we take your Oppenheimer's mines? That's where the economy is. Why don't you have the same balls when it comes to the major industrial hubs of South Africa? You know why? It's because firstly they are white owned and they are his funders. We must press amongst each other fighting from the cramps that fall from the master's table. We are not going to join that table. We want the mainstream. The history of the township starts with the dispossession of the land. The land to do business, the land to mine, the land to farm, the land for human settlement. I'm completely shocked. And I think it's important for that particular rhetoric to be exposed for what it is. You are not mobilizing us for the economy. You are not mobilizing us for the banks, for the financial muscle that is privatized and circulating only amongst the minority in the population. We want the real economy. And let me tell you, since 1955, the people of this country have always known that it's about the banks, it's about the mines. Do you know, Clement, the biggest Zamazamas, the biggest Zamazamas, the biggest Zamazamas in this country are the Oppenheimers. Go look at the gold that they've looted in Caltonville. Left a damaged environmental area with dolomatic areas 
people have sinkholes. It's a dead town. Go to Velcom, go to Kimbali. What a shameful family. The open and to take their money is to take blood money. Money that has been denied majority of the South Africans from their natural wealth. The final point. I'm shocked, you know the, the DA man here. The DA man here is old enough. He's old enough to have grown under apartheid. Apartheid was a government of parastatals, my brother. The African population in the 1930s accounted for less than 7% of the GDP. They were so niggerized. They were the poorest whites in the world. They were an embarrassment to the white supremacist culture. Apartheid took over, you must study your history. Through parastatals, through state-owned entities, Forget Venezuela, it's your only lazy intellectual example. Let's talk about it that uplifted white people in this country. They were uplifted through parastatals, Transnet, Sasol, Isco, you name them. That when you saw that you are about to lose power, you then privatized them. But forget Venezuela for a while. Let's do, you know, don't be anti academic like Hemen. We are very proud of our degrees, we got them working very hard. What is, the, what is the world economic history? What is the world economic history? After World War II, Europe, Europe's public infrastructure was devastated. How did you rebuild Europe? State parastatals. China is the fastest growing economy in the world today and the largest economy in the world today. Mm. Same as Vietnam, those are communist countries. Okay. Have the decency for intellectual honesty. Neoliberalism doesn't work. You are governing right. Tswani. There is no employment in Tswani. Water has collapsed. Services have collapsed because majority of the population there maybe is black. I don't know. Uh, thank you very you much. You are a failure as the DA. Uh, Zandile.